Hello and welcome to First Impression Reviews, where we are going to be unboxing and reviewing a figure as we're experiencing it for the first time. And today I've got another bit of an oldie figure. This is the War for Cybertron Siege Voyager, Voyager Pass Springer. A uh, figure that, uh, again, I originally passed on. This was released about mid-2019, so it's been about a year, as of the time of this recording, since that figure came out. It is, it, like I said, it is a Voyager class and originally retail for about $30. As you can see right here, I found this figure yesterday at Ross for 13. So at that price, I had to get it, uh, especially because this was a figure that I really, really wanted to check out. I passed up on it originally, begrudgingly so, because I really wanted to check. I just love the way this figure looks and I've, I've just I wanted to put my hands on it and experience it. So I'm really happy that I found it for the price that I did. You can see that Springer is displayed in his robot mode right here in the window box. Some artwork of Springer and again, you know, the whole black light thing. If you put a black light, there's some message on there that you can decode. You've got your Siege artwork on the back or on the other side there. And then on the back, we've got pictures of Springer in both robot and vehicle mode. And it also shows some interactions with some of the other battle masters or target masters if you have some of those. So let's get the box opened up and check this guy out for the first time. Okay, so we got Empty box, nothing in there. Insert, um, and again, I don't know if there was any any codes or anything like that in this background. I know, you know, they, they have the black light thing here, but I don't know about that background. So there's that. My receipt. <laughs> we'll save that in there. Uh, instruction sheet. Set that off to the side because I got a feeling I might need it. This guy uh, is going to have some steps, and uh, we got the figure and some accessories. So let's uh, go ahead and get this guy out. That's split in half. Okay, that was scary for a moment. There's that, I guess two guns there. Let's look at these real quick. Let's set that there. Let's take a look at these. So we got two guns. That's pretty cool. And as you saw, they combine to make one rifle. Set that off to the side. We have our two swords that are also going to plug into this thing here. And is there any special way to do it, or do they just plug in? They look like they just plug in. Yeah, anyway, it's fine. Oh, okay, so there are there are a couple of little teeth here, so you always want to point those away from each other. And that looks like it's going to spin just fine to make the rotor blades for the helicopter mode. So, wow, that spins really nicely. That's really cool. All right, we'll set that off to the side. Let's get Springer released from his plastic prison. There are ties up here on his biceps, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get those out. Unless I'm just going to cheat and go back here and cut them from the back. Probably the best way to go. And here we have Springer out of the package and in robot mode, and he looks fantastic. This is going to be another one of those videos, guys. You're going to hear me say G1 a lot because he looks just like he did in G1, and I absolutely love it. Here in robot mode, he's approximately seven inches tall. And just for comparison, here he is with, uh, I guess I'll call him his wave mate. I don't know if they really were wave mates, but I mean, that's the two that I found together at Ross. So you can see how they stack up side by side. And just to have a little bit more of a modern comparison, here he is with Earth Rise Optimus Prime. And Optimus Prime is just a little bit taller than Springer there at the head. So that looks really nice. Springer looks really, really good. Getting in close so we can take a look at the face details. And again, he just looks so G1. He looks really, really nice. Again, he's got that, that Siege 
uh, scuffing and, and just crap on his paint, which I really wish they would have just given us the option to not have that, but what are you gonna do? Other than that, he looks really, really nice going all the way around. Not a whole lot of cable or backpack hanging off from him. A little bit of hollowness here in the legs. Uh, that's probably because of the way he transforms. Nothing that could be helped there. Looks really, really nice. In terms of articulation, the head seems to be on a ball joint. Look a little bit up and down and side to side. The shoulders can, can they go all the way around? They can go forward and backwards. Does not look like they can go all the way around. If they can, they oh, okay, they cannot. So there's a little green part of the hinge up here that hits this part of the gray plastic down here. So they cannot go all the way around. So he can go forward that far, back that far. In and out, right there at the top of the shoulder. Rotation at the bicep, bend at the elbow, and a wrist rotation. Very nice. You can see rotation at the waist. The legs can go forward and backwards, dang near all the way around. Look at that. If the arms weren't in the way, he could go all the way around. So there's that. Let's see. He can go in and out. He can also do that due to transformation, but I guess you could probably use those for some posing maybe. Who knows? Rotation at the thigh. Looks like it. It's a mushroom peg, but man, that's really tight. It's almost scary how tight that is, but there it is. Rotation at the thigh. Uh, is it a knee bend? Is that a knee bend? No, there's a joint up here. There's the knee bend. Okay. So you have a knee bend, and I guess if you have to, you could also double, double bend the knee, I suppose, but there you go. And then the ankle can go forward and backwards, and you got ankle tilt for those ever popular surfing poses. All right, cool. So let's check out some of his accessories one more time. He's got the two guns. So these guns will fit, obviously, one in, you know, in either hand. That'll work just fine. He seems to have uh, some ports. He's got ports here on the side of the calves. And he's got ports here on his forearms. He's also got ports up here on his shoulders. He's got three ports on his back. I don't think those are going to count. So there you go. You got uh, quite a number of ports that you can do. You know, you can put these on his side also, like that, if you wanted to hold them that way. Or you can put guns up on his shoulders. Or you can just store them on his back. Whatever you want to do. And then, of course, you can also plug these together and make a big long rifle that he could hold either from the back. Can he hold it from the front? Let's see. Because that would look pretty cool if he could. It's going to be at an angle, but it's a thing that could be done. So there's that. Let's have him do this. Let's have him hold the long rifle in one hand. And then, of course, the same is going to go for the swords. He's got two of these. So we'll pick one and we'll put one sword in his hand, just like that. So there you go. Arm him up just like so. And then the other weapons. He does have these slots on the uh, swords themselves and these tabs on the side of his backpack. So these could be pegged right there. And then, of course, this little thing here. This is going to plug up here for helicopter mode. So you could just plug that back there for storage or pretty much anywhere else, really. So, yeah, you've got some options for holding and storing weapons. And, of course, you can use any number of ports and configurations here to uh, pretty much set them up any way you want. So that is pretty cool. All right, well, let's see if we can get through the transformation. This one I am kind of uh, worried about because I know it's a triple changer. And there's going to be, uh, it's going to be quite involved, I think. So let's see if I can get it without knowing what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let's start back here. This is going to open up. I'm going to straighten out the arm. And that... Uh, peg on that panel is going to plug into the fest right there and that's going to make the side of the car do that again over here peg that into the fest side of the car and I know we have to open let's get the backpack out of the way we need to do what open the chest the chest is okay so we need to get these out of the out of the way here because of these hooks that should let us bring the chest out and then we can open this up Get these panels out. The head could probably go in like this, but you'll see it under the vehicle. So this is probably not necessary, but just for aesthetic purposes, I'm going to go ahead and turn the head around. Let's see, this should close. And there are tabs here, or pegs rather, on the hood that are going to go right under there. This has to be angled just so it looks like. Oh, there you go. Okay. So it was, seemed a little difficult at first, but then it went in just fine. So that's good. Okay. Let's uh, leave these out for now. 
move that out of the way. Legs. We're gonna move these out. Rotate these. Peg them together. So how are these gonna peg together? There you go. Yeah. I know that these there you go. Wow, that uh, that was scary. That almost sounded like a like a breaking snap. And I think this okay, so there's a double hinge here, here and here. So this needs to hinge back so that the whole front of the car can come back towards the rear. Let's Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's going to get this green part up against this peg hole right there. That ought to line things up, and then we can bring the legs down. These little panels here are going to sit in these grooves. They're shaped just like the back of the feet. So we have to get those there. Okay. It's not as fiddly as I thought it was going to be. It's just you kind of have to massage everything into place all right so now we should be able to bring these up are these going to go here or to the back okay these are going to go back like this or are these going to go to the front i'm not sure i think they're going to go to the front in car mode because there's a tab right there that's going to go right there into the forearm so plug that right in there Bring this panel forward and plug the arm in there. And something doesn't seem to be lined up right, does it? Look at this. This one went in all the way, but this one did not. Why is that? What is in the way? What am I doing wrong? There it goes. I honestly don't know what I did to fix that. I really don't. Straighten this out, and then this should come down, and there are going to be some tabs here that are going to go where? Okay, so there's tabs there and there. Those are going to go into the feet here, and then these angle tabs look like they're going to go into these slots down here. So, got to get that lined up just right. Okay, there it is, I think. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't seem to be lining up just right. Okay, so it just seems like it's a case of just really kind of massaging everything in the place until the tabs fall into place. But there you go. That is the car mode, and it looks pretty good. And the car mode is approximately six and a half to seven inches long. Seems to roll just fine. All the wheels are on the surface, so that looks good. I absolutely love this car mode. Something about Springer's vehicle modes, usually no matter what, generation or iteration of Springer I'm looking at to me Springer's vehicle mode or car mode always just evokes a Batmobile to me uh, you know what I just realized I need to open these up and bring out the fins Oh, there we go. Now we have the fins out. And that now looks even more like a Batmobile because of the fins in the back here. That is so awesome. I really, really love this vehicle mode. And real quick, just for a size comparison, here he is with Earthrise Starscream, which for a Voyager has quite a big vehicle mode, but you can see what these guys are going to look like together side by side. So there you go. Vehicle size comparison for one vehicle. At least we still have another vehicle to look at. And of course, we got a bunch of weapons and accessories here, and we've got ports on the shoulders here. Uh, you know, you want to make it a Keaton-esque Batmobile, we can put weapons there and there. So you got that. And then I, um, I guess you could put these here. You can face them forward, you can face them back if you want. I don't know. Or you can do, well, I mean, you can, you can, you know, there's ports everywhere. You can come up with something. Let's... 
I guess you can do this, but this hides a fence. I don't like that. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, you've got ports everywhere. You can do pretty much anything with um, with the weapons. I personally, you know me, I am not a big fan of weapons on the vehicle mode. But being Springer won't make an exception because he is supposed to be a Cybertronian war vehicle of some sort. So that works, actually. That doesn't look too bad with the guns back there. So there you go. Pretty cool. I really love this vehicle mode. Let's see if we can finagle our way <laughs> through to the helicopter mode. So how are we going to start this? Let's, uh, I guess we're going to start with unplugging everything and kind of blowing the vehicle up. So let's open that up. And let's get the legs out of here. We'll take these back out and separate them. Man, these are really scary tight the way those are packed in. Wow. All right. I know that this needs to rotate. And again, this, this thigh joint is scary tight. That just seems so very scary tight. That's going to come out like so. And then this is going to come out. The same thing on this side. Again, the thigh, that thigh is so tight. It's scary tight. And we'll pop this guy out, rotate the foot in, pop the fin out. Now, these little joints that we saw up here earlier, we're going to use these. I like this. This is a callback to the G1 Dinobots. They did this in their transformation. And that is also quite tight. All right. So, I mean, I guess it's a good thing that the joints are tight. But, uh, man, that is scary how tight these are sometimes. So, that's going to come together. And then the fins have a little tab there or a little peg I guess those should hold together if I line this up properly there's two tabs in the back there tab them in the front here and hopefully this fin well should peg together you see the little peg in the port right there but they don't seem to be there it goes wasn't really working for me there in the beginning and these are going to go up to the front there Right, so that's all good there. Now, what about these arms? These are going to come back. And I know that these are now going to hinge down like so. And then now the arms are going to peg into the side here. But before we do that, we have to open up the arm again. Because we got to pop out the little wings here. So these are going to come out somehow. There you go. Pull this out and rotate it. And then put that back in place. Okay. Same thing on this side. Open this up. Pop the little wing out. And that popped off. So keep an eye out for that. Doesn't seem to be broken. It just pops off. Uh, it looks like my joint might be a little misshapen here. Because every time I try to get it all the way out, it pops out. Pop that out and spin it. And close the arm. Back up again. And mine doesn't seem to want to line up properly. There it goes. Okay. So now these need to collapse so that the arms can peg in. But where? Okay. There's a slot right there above the fist that should pop in right there on the side of the helicopter. Do that over here as well. And again, front of my vehicle. Wow, that was scary. Not really lining up. And then this should come back in again, peg into these slots back here on the feet this time. Got to bring it back all the way. There you go. Okay, looks like we made it through the helicopter mode. So that's pretty cool. Now we'll go ahead and bring in his accessories. And this time we should be able to use all the accessories. So we'll go ahead and put the blades on this thing and this is going to pop right into the top here and then we've got do these just sit here and spin around like this or should they tab into something kind of feels like they should tab into something maybe you push them in a little bit and of course we can take these little guns and put them anywhere we want i guess i'm just going to put them right there on top of the wings there Yeah, that'll work. 
That, oh, that's neat. Okay, so check this out. I just noticed this. Check this out. So on this wing, let me pop this off again. That's tricky. All right, so this this gun, I completely, this, this just completely happened by luck, I just noticed. This gun, you'll notice it's smooth here on the side. This gun has these tabs right here. Well, if you look at this wing, this wing actually has a slot to accommodate the tab on here. This wing does too. So both wings have the little slot right there to accommodate the tabs on the gun. That is really cool how they did that. So let's pop that in there. Let's pop that in there. And there you go. Here is Springer in his helicopter mode. And hey, he looks pretty cool. And here in helicopter mode, he, he's about seven inches long, so he didn't grow uh, too much. He just extended a little bit in the back there. That's about it. He looks really nice. Uh, my only real gripe with him is that the front wheels, the way they, they, they don't really cover up, if you don't have the guns in here, it doesn't really hide those front wheels too much. So the front of the vehicle still looks very car-ish to me. Uh, I can forgive the one on the back because, you know, helicopters tend to have rotor in the back. So that's very easily forgivable as a rotor, but, uh, or it's uh, not the stabilizer. Yeah, we'll just call it a rotor for the counter rotation. But there you go. Looks pretty cool. I love the way that spins. It's so loose uh, and not in a bad way. It's loose in the, well, you're seeing it now that it just spins very freely it just keeps on going that looks really really nice and just kind of going all the way around so you can see the vehicle mode and that is still a very again you know looks a little car-ish in the front but other than that it's a very convincing helicopter looks really really nice and one more time just a size comparison with Starscream in his earth jet mode and you can see that Springer did do a little bit of growth in size there but not uh, you know Made them grow a little bit, not too much. Very, very cool. Very awesome um, Voyager figure. I, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one. Again, I'm really, really glad that I picked this guy up. That is a really cool um, figure and very cool vehicle modes. Both of them are absolute winners. And there we have one last look at Siege Voyager Class Springer back in robot mode. Engaging in battle with Starscream. And I got to say... P passed on it the first time and really kind of almost regretted it and seeing it at ross for 13 bucks absolutely sealed the deal i am so happy to have picked up this figure because this is a fun figure he looks fantastic in all three modes again they just got all three modes right and that's something that i love about the war for cybertron trilogy is that especially with the triple changers they just got everything right on all the ones that i've had an experience with so far it's just such a nice line so far and so that about does it for siege springer let me know what you thought of this figure down in the comments below give me some thumbs up subscribe hit that bell icon so you're notified when i upload a new video i got the donate button if you want to hit on that i certainly would appreciate it share with your friends if you like what you see and i'll talk to you next time